This LOS is described characteristics of types of equity securities. Before we jump into this LOS, we'll do a little bit of a introduction. The study of equity securities is important for many reasons. First, the decision on how much of a client's portfolio to allocate to equities affects the risk and return characteristics of the entire portfolio. Second, different types of equity securities have different ownership claims on a company's net assets, which affect their risk and return characteristics in different ways. Finally, variations in the features of equity securities are reflected in their market prices, so it's important to understand the valuation implication of these features. So a few of the key bullet points here that it's going to be studied in this reading and in uh, the upcoming LOSs, not only this one, is what distinguishes common shares from preference shares and what purposes do these securities serve in financing a company's operations? Number two, what are convertible preference shares and why are they often used to raise equity for unseasoned or highly risky companies? Number three, what are private equity securities and how do they differ from public equity securities? Number four, what are depository receipts and their various types, and what is the rationale for investing in them? Uh, the next point is, what are the risk factors involved in investing in equity securities? How do equity securities create company value? And finally, what is the relationship between a company's cost of equity, its return on equity, and investors' rate of return? So these are basically the LOSs that we're looking at uh, um, with this reading. Types and characteristics of equity securities. So the first type of equity security we're going to look at is the common shares. And common shares have a residual claim to firm assets. What does that mean? Well, we know the balance sheet assets equals liabilities plus equity. So assets minus liabilities equals equity. So if a company was to sell all the assets and pay all the liabilities, what is left over is uh, uh, belongs to the common shareholders. And that's why we call it a residual claim. Okay. Common shareholders vote for board members on some issues, in person or by proxy. Different classes of common shares can have a different number of votes per share, and also common shares can have a call or a put feature. And these are uh, option type features, which give the holder the right but not the obligation to do certain things. So continuing with the common shares, we're gonna look at the difference between statutory non-cumulative voting and cumulative voting, okay? So we're gonna consider an example of an owner has 100 shares of common stock and three board members are to be elected. If it's statutory, if the common shares are statutory non-cumulative voting, the shareholder can give a maximum of 100 votes for each of the three candidates. If it's cumulative voting, a shareholder can give a maximum of 300 votes to one candidate, and this allows minority shareholders to gain board seats. Now we're going to look at preference shares, and some of the characteristics of preference shares are that the dividends have priority over common stock, and dividends can be cumulative or non-cumulative. What does cumulative mean? It means that if a preferred uh, dividend is not paid, then common share a uh, common dividend cannot be paid until the dividends owning, owing to the uh, preferred shareholders are paid, okay? Non-cumulative means if it's not paid, then uh, that dividend will be missed. Like common stock, they have no maturity date, okay? They typically have no voting rights, so preference shares, no voting rights. Most are non-participating and the dividend is fixed. That's the key thing. The dividend is fixed, so the characteristics of preferred shares is uh, similar to bonds in a way because the dividend is fixed. And participating preferred shares receive greater dividends if profit targets are reached. So that's a characteristic of a uh, participating preferred is that they'll receive a greater dividend. And finally, uh, preferred shares can also be convertible. Convertible preferred shares is another characteristic that is uh, sometimes issued. So continue with the preference shares and convertible preferred shares can be exchanged for a given number of common shares, uh, and i.e. that's the there's a conversion ratio. Uh, the preferred dividend is typically greater than the common dividend. Shareholders can benefit from growth by converting to common, and it is uh, less risky than common stock. So we'll just finish this LOS with two quick practice questions. All of the following are characteristics of preference shares except A, they are either callable or puttable, B, they generally do not have voting rights, or C, they do not share 
in the operating performance of the company. Okay, turn this one into a true or false question. So all of the following are the characteristics of the preference shares. So they generally do not have voting rights. That's true. They do not share in the operating performance of the company. That's true unless they're a participating preferred. They are either callable or puttable. No, that's false. They could be, but uh, not either or. So A is correct. Preference shares do not have to be either callable or puttable. So again, that's a little bit of an uh, English language word game. They could be, but they are not either callable or puttable. It's not either or. And one last practice question to finish this LOS. Participating preference shares untitled shareholders to A, participate in the decision-making process of the company, B, convert their shares into a specified number of common shares, or C, receive an additional dividend if the company's profits exceed a predetermined level. I think this question is pretty easy. Be happy to see that on an exam. So participating preferred shares entitle shareholders to receive an additional dividend if the company's profits exceed a predetermined level. Uh, in terms of participating in the decision-making process of the company, no, it's not talking about any voting. Our B, convert their shares into a specified number of common shares. No, be careful. That's a convertible preference share, not a participating preference share. So when I see a question like this, I always think, well, how could it be similar but different? And then I would think about, uh, well, they could, in, they could have a question uh, about a convertible preference shares, and it would be almost the same thing. But uh, C would be, uh, you know, convert their preferred shares into a common shares at a predetermined ratio. And anyhow, that's the last slide for this uh, LOS. Thank you.